Hello, and welcome to O Worm. Today we'll be looking at the anatomy of a crayfish. Crayfish are part of a group of animals called arthropods. Millions of years ago, arthropods evolved to have jointed appendages. This was colloquially referred to as a pro-gamer move, as it allowed the animal to have much greater flexibility and range of movement. In fact, those arthropods must be doing something right, because there are over three times as many species of arthropods as there are of all other animals on Earth. So as you can see in the crayfish, its legs are jointed, and it can bend back and forth like this. Other characteristics of arthropods include a hard exoskeleton, like the one you see here. It's made of a compound called chitin. The exoskeleton supports and protects the delicate soft tissues of the crayfish, which lacks an internal skeleton. You can think of this as being encased in a full suit of armor, except you also have no bones. It's a bit of a trade-off. Since the exoskeleton is hard and its outer layer is non-living, it can't slowly grow bigger like the human skeleton does. Instead, arthropods have to shed the old exoskeleton and expand to a larger size before the new exoskeleton hardens. This process is called molting. Another characteristic of arthropods is having groups of body segments that are fused together to form a functional unit. These are called tegmata, and the crayfish has two of them. The top portion is called the cephalothorax, which is basically the two words cephalo and thorax mashed up together. This is brilliant because that's exactly what it is. Cephalo means head, and thorax means thorax, and the cephalothorax in a crayfish is basically the head and the thorax region fused together. The second tegma is the abdomen, right here. Now, crayfish have five pairs of legs, meaning ten total. The first two here are highly modified. They're called chelipeds, and they're used for cutting up food, capturing prey, attacking one another, and as a defense against predators. These other four pairs, you see one, two, three, four, and here there's one that's broken, but that's okay. These other four pairs have the less glamorous but still important job of locomotion. These legs are used to walk around. On the abdomen, the crayfish have five pairs of smaller limbs called swimmerets. These swimmerets have three main functions. They help the crayfish swim, they help move water over the gills, and on a female crayfish, they're used to hold the eggs right here. Interestingly, Crayfish only walk forwards and only swim backwards. Crayfish normally use their four pair of walking legs to move around, but they use powerful thrusts of their tails to rapidly propel themselves backwards through the water, like this, when escaping a predator. In order to tell the sex of our crayfish, we can look at the first pair of swimmerets, also called the copulatory swimmerets. These copulatory swimmerets are hard and long in males, but they're thin and feathery in females. So this one we have here is a female, because these swimmerets are thin and feathery. The crayfish has a complete digestive tract, which means it has both a mouth and an anus, and some complicated maneuvering inside its body to get from one to the other. The mouth is here at the front of its body, and the anus is here at the base of its tail. Its tail here is in a fan shape, and it helps propel them through the water. These segments here are called uropods, and in the middle of the uropods is a structure called the telson. So uropods, telson. Going back to its head, you can see that the crayfish has two pairs of antennae here. Crayfish often live in murky water, and they can also be active at night, so these antennae are important in helping the crayfish move around when they can't see. A 
Okay, now I'm going to snap off the pincers so we can take a better look at the mouth. These are called the maxillary pads and they hold and push food to the mouth. It's kind of like if you had a pair of legs right next to your mouth. Because why not? Now, underneath these, it's a bit hard to see. Right, these are called the mandibles and they're used to grind up food. They also move side to side. Picture your own mouth. Now turn it 90 degrees. It'll look horrifying, but a crayfish thinks you're horrifying with a normal mouth. We all have different standards. Alright, now let's get into the internal anatomy. I'm going to get my scissors in here and carefully cut along the dorsal side. So take care to only cut the top and angle your scissors up so that you don't damage any of the internal structures. Now I'll pull the exoskeleton away gently using the probe to detach the muscles that are attached to the exoskeleton. Be careful when you pull it away to avoid damaging the internal structures. So you can do the same thing to the abdomen here. Just pull away the exoskeleton from the internal flesh. Now the first thing you see here, these feathery things are the gills. The gills participate in gas exchange, which means it both goes grocery shopping and takes out the trash, i.e. it absorbs oxygen and removes carbon dioxide. You may notice that the exoskeleton covered the gills, which makes it hard for it to do its job because it can't access much water. But don't worry. Evolution did the crayfish a real solid by attaching its gills to its legs, as you can see here. This way, when the legs move, the gills move with it. This would work a lot better in a living organism, uh, which stirs up the water and allows freshly oxygenated water to enter under the exoskeleton. You should also notice that the gills are really feathery, like this, for more surface area which is always important for gas exchange. I'm going to quickly run through some muscles now to give you a glimpse into a crayfish's daily workout. First, they flex these posterior and anterior gastric muscles, which are attached to either end of the stomach here and help with digestion. Then they work out these mandibular muscles here which move the mandibles on the other side. Also, they make sure to work on the abdominal muscles, the flexor muscle here, which curls the tail, like this, and the smaller extensor muscles on the side, here, which works to extend the tail. Thank you, and tune in next week for some crayfish yoga tips. Here, running along the groove in the abdomen, is the intestine. I'm going to put my probe under it. There we go. This is also the part that gets removed when you de-vein a crayfish. I say eat it with the rest of the flesh. Then you'll get to taste both the crayfish and its last meal. Yum! Now I'll push back this flap of skin so we can see the reproductive organs here. There you go. These two yellow things are the reproductive organs, and in this case, they're the ovaries, because we saw earlier that this crayfish is female. Now, here in the middle, this small structure, there you go, 
This one is the heart. It has these holes called ostia, right there. And this is a big red flag that this animal has an open circulatory system. If you have a closed circulatory system and have holes in your heart, there may be something wrong. Go see a doctor. An open circulatory system needs a heart with holes because it doesn't have a closed system of veins and arteries. Instead, the heart pumps to move around the fluid called hemolymph, which fills the body cavity. The hemolymph enters and exits the heart through these holes. Now if you move further up, these structures here are the digestive glands, which, you're not gonna believe this, produces digestive enzymes. Okay, fine, it also stores glucose. Gold star. Up here is the cardiac and pyloric stomach, which are great partners in crime, because the pyloric stomach does chemical digestion, while the cardiac stomach does mechanical digestion. The cardiac stomach is the thinner walled structure here, and the pyloric stomach is the thicker walled one sitting above the cardiac stomach. Now I'm going to remove the stomach to get a better look inside. Just pinch and gently pull it out. open up the stomach to get a better look at the structures inside. There we go. So the cardiac stomach in particular packs quite a punch because you're gonna love this. Look at this, they have these things called gastric mills. This is literally like having a set of teeth in your stomach. Crayfish didn't get to have teeth in their mouth, so they did one better and put it in their stomach. That's hardcore. I'll try to get a better look at these. You can see one on each side. There's another one. Okay, so if you go back to the crayfish, under the stomach, here is the nerve cord running along the ventral side. This is kind of like the spinal cord. At the end where they meet is the brain, which is very tiny because the crayfish is like that. And no, it won't stand for your judgment. It's perfectly happy as it is. Now up here are the antennal glands. We'll try to push them up. There's one there. There's another one on the other side. And I'm going to try to pull that one up too. It's a bit hard. There, there you go. So I know this is a weird spot for a kidney to be in, but that's basically what it is. It functions in osmoregulation which means that it's in charge of regulating the salt and water balance in an organism. Now I'm going to move all the way down to the end of the abdomen, and I'm going to try to remove the abdominal muscles to get a look at the nerve cord. Okay, it's stuck to the muscle, so I'll dig it out a bit. All right, here we go. So this is the same nerve cord that we saw before, and it runs down the full length of the body. And that's the end of our crayfish dissection. Thanks for staying, folks. Here's a fun fact about crayfish to send you on your way. There's a species of crayfish called the dwarf crayfish. It is a very small crayfish. It is so small that the smallest dwarf crayfish is smaller than every other dwarf crayfish. You are welcome for the information. Have a nice day. All right, just kidding. Dwarf crayfish can grow up to five centimeters. That's the length of three and a half aspirins. It's also the size of one tenth of a bowling pin. That's about 40 times as long as a grain of sand. No, I refuse to use the imperial system. Stop trying to make me do it. I won't. I said five centimeters and that's all you get.